What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. In today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the biggest trades from the Wall Street Bets Forum over the past week, so we can learn from other traders' experiences. First off, we have user Hardo Tendies, who is back holding an $80,000 loss on his Clover YOLO. He owns 100 contracts of $22 strike calls expiring on January 21st of 2022, as well as 25,000 shares. A few months ago, he published a DD post on r slash Clove explaining his rationale. He said that Clover was primed for a short squeeze based on the fails to deliver data. This gave him confidence to invest $250,000 into Clover calls and shares. Clover is a healthcare technology company which was taken public through a SPAC sponsored by Chamath Palahapatiya. It was off to a pretty good start until February 4th when short selling firm Hindenburg Research published a report exposing a Department of Justice investigation into the company's business practices. This caused the stock's price to tank 40% over the coming months as short sellers piled into the stock. The high short interest eventually piqued the attention of retail investors who started buying the stock eventually triggering a short squeeze. This Wall Street Bets user thought that another squeeze was imminent so he initiated his $250,000 position. Unfortunately, Clover's stock has languished over the past few months, with its share price hovering around the $8 to $9 range. His $22 strike calls are now more than 100% out of the money and have lost more than 75% of their values. The OP hasn't recognized the losses yet and says he doesn't intend to sell his position until it reaches $1 million. Fortunately, most of his position is in shares, so there's still hope for a turnaround. We wish you luck. Next off, we have user Square Xu, with what he calls the largest loss porn ever posted in Wall Street Bets history. He started off the year of 2021 with about $100,000 in his account. By the end of January, things were off to a good start. He bought calls on GameStop, causing his account to surge to $1.8 million by January 28th. Instead of taking profits, he doubled down on the position, bringing it to $4 million the next day on January 29th. Unsuccessful options plays took his account down to $1.9 million by February 11th. On February 18th, his account peaked at almost $5 million. He bought out-of-the-money calls on Churchill Capital 4, the SPAC that merged with Lucid Motors. Lucid was a perfect stock for that time period as it benefited from both the SPAC and EV graces. Lucid Motors brought his account up to $5 million, but it was also the source of his eventual undoing. Instead of taking profits, he rolled the gains into more out-of-the-money FDs on the EV maker. As the stock price fell back down to earth, so did his portfolio. It declined from $5 million down to just $13,000. This is a more than 85% loss from his starting balance of $100,000 at the beginning of the year. Had he sold at the top, $5 million would have been more than enough to live the rest of his life in luxury. If he just bought dividend stocks paying a 5% yield, he could have $250,000 of passive income every single year for the rest of his life. In hindsight, it's easy to say he should have cashed out when his portfolio reached $5 million, but there's no way he could have known this would be the peak. He didn't cash out at $5 million for the same reason that he didn't cash out at $4 million, $2 million, or $500,000. And if he cashed out at any of these levels, his portfolio would never have reached the $5 million. When you're making millions of dollars in the FD casino, it's almost impossible to know when to pull out. That's why multi-million dollar losses are so common on Wall Street bets. A few lucky traders make millions in unrealized gains, but it's very hard for them to take these gains and put them into boomer value stocks for the rest of their lives. There's no reason to stop at $5 million when one more successful FD could take this to $50 million. But the craziest thing about Square Xu's story is that it doesn't end there. By mid-August, he hadn't made much progress and his account fell below $10,000 after an unsuccessful SoFi earnings play. Having almost nothing left in his account, he decided he would make one final YOLO. He got a $50,000 personal loan and $10,000 cash advance from his credit card. He used the borrowed funds to play two penny stocks which he thought had short squeeze potential, Support.com and Vinco Ventures. Both of these stocks have market caps of less than $1 billion, so he posted about these in r slash short squeeze instead of r slash Wall Street bets. In late August, he started day trading these two stocks and successfully brought his account up to $100,000. But this was only the beginning. On August 26th, he noticed that support.com was rising steadily throughout the entire day with no momentum to the downside. He took this as a bullish signal for the next leg of the short squeeze and went all in on out of the money calls expiring in September. 
He exploited a glitch in TD Ameritrade's website, which allowed him to buy $130,000 worth of SPRT options, even though he only had $100,000 of equity in his account. The very next day, this bold YOLO paid off big time, with the share price rising more than 100%, bringing his account value back to $500,000. He sold SPRT almost exactly at the intraday high before it crashed. He immediately rolled these gains into calls on Vinco Ventures, which ended the day up 90% and increased another 70% the following trading day. This was enough to take his account from $50,000 to $3.4 million in just a few days. He withdrew $600,000 to pay off his loans, which is why the chart only shows $2.7 million. He then sold some of his Vinco Ventures calls and diversified into Tattooed Chef, Genius Sports, and a few other plays. This will go down as one of the greatest comeback stories in Wall Street Bets history. We wish you luck on holding on to these gains. Next off we have user Seesaw32, who hasn't been having a great time in the markets over the past year. Right before the pandemic struck, he funded a Robinhood account with a little over $14,000. He did pretty well over the summer with puts on Penn National Gaming. He also made some gains on Facebook calls. But in September of 2020, Penn started to increase in value, causing many of his puts to expire worthless. This caused his Robinhood account to decline almost 97% to just $440. He decided to start fresh by closing down his Robinhood account and switching to TD Ameritrade. After making some quick gains on Palantir in November, he withdrew the money from his account. But in the summer, he put the money back in and lost almost everything with call options on Las Vegas Sands, Amazon, and Tesla. In total, he lost $38,000 over the course of one and a half years. In light of his poor performance, he decided to hold off on buying options and focus only on shares. Despite the large trading losses over the last year, he made enough regular income to pay off his car loan. He also took advantage of historically low interest rates to refinance his home mortgage. So despite his trading losses, he's actually come out of the pandemic in a pretty good financial position. We wish you luck. Next off we have user Adorable Pirate, who is up $230,000 or 80% on his concentrated position in Hut 8 Mining. He owns 28,500 shares in the company, with an average cost basis of $5.89. The stock has almost doubled since then to $10.64, bringing his portfolio value to exceed half a million dollars. Hut 8 is a Bitcoin mining company that operates a massive mining operation in Alberta, Canada. Its revenue and profitability have increased dramatically over the past year, as the price of Bitcoin has increased. You can see that stock price closely followed the price of Bitcoin over the past few years. During the long crypto winter of 2018 through 2020, the stock price languished, falling as low as 48 cents in March of 2020. It is more than 20x since those levels and now sits at above $10 per share. The OP is apparently a big believer in Bitcoin as he maxed out his margin and put 100% of his portfolio into this single stock. And it worked out quite well. Congratulations on your gains. To wrap things up, we have user Jamie Fannister, who made even greater gains on the same stock, Hunt Mining. Instead of using margin to buy shares, this Wall Street Bets user bought out the money options expiring between October of 2021 and December of 2022. In total, they're up 197%, or $173,000. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about these trades? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.